That's another nice fish. <laughs> oh yeah. That's net worthy. Get in there. Hey folks, how you doing? Cam Trout here. So recently, you know, I think fall and almost winter has finally arrived to the Delmarva area. With that comes kind of the tail end of that really hot lure bite for snakehead. And it moves into more of the nuanced fall tactics for snakehead. So in this video right here, which was actually a subscriber day meetup that I did with a few guys out there, You'll see each one of them in the video here as we get to it. I actually had to employ a lot of fall tactics on this day. And you'll see that as we go through it. But I'll stop the video or I'll voice over the video at a few key points so I can really drive those points home for what I think are gonna be the most effective tactics going forward. But that's what this video is gonna be about, fall tactics for snakehead. So if you haven't already, please hit that like button for me. Helps out a lot with the YouTube algorithm. And other than that, let's get to the fishing action and the fall tactics for snakehead. Hey, morning folks, we're out here, Eastern Shore, Maryland, subscriber day. Got a bunch of guys over here. We got Pat, your name again, brother? Tim. Tim, Presley, Presley. Matt. Matt. Yeah, you'll probably know Matt, yeah. MFers Outdoors, check them out on YouTube. I don't know this guy over here, but he's tagging along, man. <laughs> <laughs> brother DJ, and we got Justin and Jesse, Jesse right? Yeah. All right, I got a few names remembered. <laughs> We got great conditions. We got overcast skies. It was warm overnight, so the water temp shouldn't have dropped. We got our front coming in, should start raining around noon. We could be in for a day. You know, I, knock on wood, I hate to say that. Whenever I say it's gonna be a great day, man, it starts to be a tough bite, but let's hit the water and give it a shot. Nice chunk of bass, man. This river, if you wanna catch bass alongside Snakehead, there's few places to go that are better than this right here. Nice fish, bro. Hell yeah, all right. So folks, if you weren't aware that I was doing a subscriber day, make sure that next time you're following me at Cambo Trout Fishing on Facebook. That's where I made this particular announcement. So that way, if you want to join me next time, <laughs> it's a soft fish jump. That way, if you want to join me next time, you know exactly what to do and where that announcement will be made. One other thing I did this morning is that for all the subscribers who came out, Handed out a few of the stickers that I still have for sale over at Redbubble. See the link in the description. We have the snake, we have the Dragon Tamer, Maryland's new game fish, Invasive Fisherman, Invasive Slam, a bunch of others. So, next time I do a subscriber day, I hope to see you out here. There you are. Ah, large mouth. <laughs> Freaking large mouth. Skunks out of the boat. But that's not what we're here for. There she is. About a 15 inch or so maybe. Pretty fish, healthy, thick fish. Smells glorious like all large mouth do. <laughs> but not what we're looking for. All right, now she came from right over here. What do I describe that as? I suppose she came kind of off timber. I haven't been able to develop any kind of pattern for the snakehead. I spooked one out from under a duck blind, but other than that, I really haven't seen anything. I'm still trying to figure these fish out. That's a snake, that's a snake. There you are. Come here. Come her. There you are. 
put you in the boat. Now don't hook me now. Don't do it. And that's the only thing about using them treble hooks, folks. They are dangerous. All right, got her on the grips. Hey, fellas. Meps number four. Meps four. Yep. Three. Now I'll probably do the trick. That's what I was using during the uh, the tournament. There she is. Let's get her on the bump. Let's get her on the bump. Rated 19. As folks, if I didn't mention it before, right as we were launching, we agreed to do a little bit of a competition out here. Nothing big. But whoever gets the biggest snakehead today is going to take home a little bit of money. <laughs> and I don't think this one's going to clinch it for me. I hope it doesn't. <laughs> I hope we catch some bigger ones in this today, but hey, we're on the board. Now folks, as you can see, so far I've gotten the one bass on the topwater mouse, and I got a snakehead on the MEPS. What I did was I was throwing topwater up shallow, hoping they'd be there, because <laughs> they had been in recent times when this video was taking place. But there are some days, especially when you have some colder weather roll in, that you'll find the snakehead moving out from cover, being on channel edges, or at least what passes for channel edges in blackwater type area. And when that happens, what I'll throw, I tried the chatterbait, didn't get anything, but what I'll really throw is that MEPS. When they're tight-lipped and don't want to bite many of the lures, especially when it's the water's getting a little bit colder, those MEP spinners can be deadly. There you are. GoPro, start recording. Now with that being said, once the water temps get down to the low 60s, high 50s, I do love throwing a buzz bait in the fall. That might be an upgrade by about an inch, maybe. <laughs> and she came on the buzz bait. Let me my trailer hook. There you go. <laughs> there you go. There she is. Let's see. Yeah, about another 19 inch or 19 and a half. Yeah, she came on this timber right over here, just pulling the buzz bait through. It's pretty textbook. Anytime I get around timber, I love <laughs> I love throwing a buzz bait around timber. Love it. All right, little sucker. Yeah, I think it will harvest you. Well, I did get that one on the buzz bait. After that, it really became more of the fall tactics that I'm telling you about here today. Specifically, the MEPS. And when it comes to another tactic that I often use, I'll drag a minnow behind my boat at times while I'm fan casting with my MEP spinners. What I'm doing with this, with the minnow rig that is, is I'm trailing it behind me, probably about 30 to 40 feet. And I just happen to turn around and see all those bubbles right over there. That's where she smacked it, the little rascal. So I think that's two fish landed now on the MEPs. And what I'm seeing is kind of what I was afraid of. <laughs> we haven't been getting that much from the shore. And we've been spooking them a little bit off the shore. And logically what that means is that for whatever reason, I'm not going to pretend to understand why, <laughs> but for whatever reason, they seem to be offshore today, out towards what passes for a channel here in the Blackwater area, which is <laughs> still really shallow, probably around three or four feet. But thus far, I've had one short strike, and that one fish you just saw since I started fishing the channel. So until I can see a new pattern emerge <laughs> with those fish hitting more on the shoreline, I'm going to stick with this. this is, to be honest, it's not, something, it's not something I'm comfortable with. It's not something I often do, and it's not something I like to do. I'd much rather fish them in the shallows, on top water. It's much more fun. But if this is where they're going to be, then this is where I'll go. So we'll see what develops throughout the day. Let's see. Can we break 20 inches? <laughs> I kind of doubt it. <laughs> if she did, it's just barely. Yeah, she might go 21. She might go 21. Hey, Matt. Another one? Yeah, dude. That MEPS is doing work, bro.
Oh, jeez, at least. <laughs> I'm on you. There you are. It's about time for a new pair of lip grips. She's thick. She's a thick little one, but <laughs> not that long. All right, rascal. The way I found that fish, it was a conscious decision for me to come to right where I'm sitting right now. Because, like I've said in the previous segment, it doesn't seem like the snakehead are very shallow today. I haven't seen much action from snakehead shallow, hardly at all, to be honest. So what I've done is I've started to target those areas that I think would produce fish based on a deeper water pattern. So what I came to was the mouth of this creek. And when I was like, okay, I'm going to cast into the mouth of this creek and see if anything is sitting in the mouth. Because if they've moved off deeper, you know, logically that's where I thought they might be. And sure enough, the first cast in the mouth of this creek right here as it enters the channel, there she was. Now these pads look great, but I, I fished the pads today and I haven't seen a thing. I've got zero out of the pads. I think I may have spooked a fish here or there in the pads, but... I was paddling through, intentionally trying to spook them earlier in another pad field and just nothing, nothing doing. So I'm going to stick with this deeper water pattern for the time being and hope that it continues to pay off. Hey, you rascal. Man, I can't find the big snakes today to save my life. Now this was a minnow I was trailing behind my boat. Oh, okay. There's one more, a little itty bitty, number six or so. She <laughs> she drowned that float. Look at that minnow, still going strong. You earned your freedom, buddy. You go ahead and get out of here. Biggest of the day right there. Yes, Mets. There you are. That's a solid fish. Yeah, dude. Whew. That'll be my last fish harvested today. Nice fish. Oh, yes. <laughs> Again, folks, I'm, I'm fishing the MEPS offshore. Like, you see where I'm casting it. I'm not casting too shore. I'm fishing it offshore. It's just one of those days, and it may have something to do with the fall transition. It may just be temporary. I don't know yet. But it's definitely been the pattern today for me to find these fish in deeper water there she is nice fish you've seen my videos normally what i'm doing oh she choked it too boy she choked it okay i'm gonna go ahead and dispatch her and then get the hook out but here's one shot of her that's a mid-20s fish very nice very nice all right you go oh. thank you for your sacrifice that feels pretty good. Came on the minnow. That's number eight. Well, that might be a better fish. That's another nice fish. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's net worthy. Get in there. <laughs> yeah, dude. Getting something going now. I don't think it'll be enough to take the lead from Pat, but it's gonna be close. All right, you big rascal. Cut it up. <laughs> now, I could be mistaken, but what I seem to be noticing here is that since I came back upstream, I've hit a stretch that has some deeper water, and I've picked up my two biggest fish today as soon as I got back into that deep water. Deeper water, I should say. <laughs> The depth is relative when you're, when you're in the Blackwater area. There's not too much deep water. But in the Blackwater area, four or five feet of depth can mean a lot. That's a nice fish. Yeah, I better measure. I better measure that. That might take the lead from Pat. That would be sweet. <laughs> Give you all a shot. Oh, I'm going to measure her first. <laughs> I want to measure her before I dip her in the water to get a nice picture and all that. I don't want to lose her without having measured her. So I'm going to let her go 
I already have three fish on the stringer, three smaller fish. What do we got? Oh God, inch short. She's an inch short of Pat. <laughs> Son of a Now I'll get y'all a good shot of her. And she's just over 20. She's just over 26 and thick. I mean a thick fish. What a beauty. You are an absolute beauty. Ah, I love these fish so much. <laughs> there you go. All right, you big rascal. Thanks for the ride. Now this may seem like common sense for some of y'all out there, but in case you don't know, you want to have the biggest bait that you can for snakehead. Biggest bait fish, I should say. Within reason, I guess up to about <laughs> five inches or so. But the biggest minnows you can get your hands on, put it that way. But if you can't get jumbo minnows, like these minnows ain't bad. I'm not saying they're bad, but they're not jumbo either. What you can do is double or triple hook them. And then you have a much more enticing meal or a big hungry snakehead out there. Ah, I knew you'd be back there. Ah, gotta arrest my momentum before I burn the rest of the holes. So folks, last time I was here, there was a pattern by which <laughs> the topwater bite didn't really turn on until the late morning, early afternoon. And as I've been going along cruising here, using my MEPS and everything, I haven't really been getting anything like I was. They didn't seem to be in the places that they've been in. So I said, okay, I'll start fishing the shoreline again. You get some damage to his back right there. And I'm finding these little cuts, these little hidey holes with top cover. I dropped it in there and she slurped it. Boy, she slurped it. Top water. In my experience, it seems that the better topwater bite is going to be in the late morning and early afternoon once the water's had a chance to warm up. Yes. Folks, aside from this catfish right here, that little bait stealer, <laughs> and some other short strikes that I got on topwater throughout the day, that rounded out the catches. What I will show you here, though, to close things out, a few shots of the guys I was out here with, I did get some pictures from Justin Seller. You'll see his pictures right here. He stuck it out and got his snake on the day, man. Good job. <laughs> and some other pictures from me throughout the day. Now, it may look from this video that it was a pretty solid bite, but I'm telling you, we had to work for the fish we caught. The bite that I thought was going to be fire, <laughs> it just wasn't, man. And that's how it goes sometimes. Still learning. Always learning. Thanks for watching, folks. Hope the video and tips helped. Please like, share, and subscribe, and have a good one.